Hey, welcome back to our series on JavaScript bytecode, where we're deep diving how the JavaScript source code that you write is represented at a machine bytecode level. And we think that by going through this exercise, it will really help you write better JavaScript code because you're gonna understand what that turns into at that bytecode level. So in the last few videos, we focused on how the JavaScript engine works and how your source code translates into that machine code that is either running on the browser and in the cases we're looking at, it's the Chromium-based engine, so it's the V8 engine underneath any Chromium-based browsers or Node.js. But of course, the same techniques, the same principles apply to other JavaScript engines. So in the previous two videos, we studied the accumulator and then subsequently registers. And this video, we're gonna extend it even further. So rather than just looking at addition functions, we're gonna look at what other mathematical functions you can do in JavaScript and how that translates to bytecode and then how you can use those registers more effectively as well. So let's get on with it and get started. Okay, now that we understand how that works and how additions happen and how interactions between the accumulator and the registers occur, um, we can do other types of calculations. It doesn't need to just be additions. It could be things like multiplications. It could be things like uh, divisions. So if I wanna do that, all I need to do is start changing symbols. So rather than doing n1 plus n2, I can do a multiplication. And if I just run that for a second um, over here, and what you're gonna see there is, if we look at the bytecode that's generated, everything is the same. So load small integer 10, five, store and register zero and one, um, does a reload there. But the key thing is that it's gonna do now is, is rather than doing an add, it does a multiplication. So it's MUL. So the, the opcode, the instruction code, for that is MUL, and you can see that represented as 37 there, and then it's gonna work on uh, register zero, uh, and it's gonna basically multiply uh, whatever is in the accumulator with what's in register zero. So pretty simple stuff there. Um, and again, if I go back to my code, I can maybe do a subtraction. So rather than uh, multiplying these two numbers together, I can maybe uh, you know minus them. And, and again, you could probably guess that add was called add, mul is called mul. Maybe, just a guess, that it might be sub. That would be my guess. Let's run the code. Um, and then you can see, yeah, it's, it's sub. So, uh, and it's in the exact same thing as it did before. So whatever is in the accumulator at that point is being subtracted uh, with with the, the contents of R0. Something is probably just to be aware of is just some of the ordering here for a second. So if we look at this, the sub, right, at this point in time, five is in the accumulator, not 10. So sub is actually taking the number from the register that's pushed in. So in this case, R0, which is 10, and then subtracting from the register, whatever is in the accumulator, and then putting the result in the accumulator. So it would be 10 minus five in the accumulator, and then putting the result as five in the accumulator and returning that out. It's just something to be aware of on the ordering. And we've done add, we've done multiply, we've done subtract, we might as well do divide. So if I was just to change that minus uh, to a divide and, uh, and then run the code again, you would see it's gonna return two. So 10 divided by five is two. And then surprise, surprise, you know, it's done exactly the same code as it's done before. Load and accumulator, store the value in a register, you know, for 10, five, it's not done anything different there. And then of course, rather than running an add or a mul or a sub, in this case, the opcode is gonna be a div. And you can kind of see 38 is representing the div in this case. Uh, FA is uh, register zero. Um, and then we're sort of good to go there. Um, so it's gonna do the calculation. Uh, it's gonna store the result in the accumulator, which is gonna be two, and then it's gonna return whatever is in the accumulator. So that's AB, it's gonna return two, we're done. So that is how the accumulator and the register and calculations work. Um, there is a sort of few key things at this point that I'm really wanting everybody to be aware of is that this thing called the accumulator is kind of key to everything. That's where you're gonna be doing uh, calculations where you do the additions, multiplications, divisions, etc., And then of course, you've got these registers for storage. So, okay, so just to reflect on this a little bit, 
we're now starting to get comfortable with this concept of the accumulator and all of these registers. So hopefully next time you look at your JavaScript code, you're gonna start to see these registers or these virtual registers, and you're gonna see them mapping to your declarations, whether it's const or let or var. You're, you're gonna start to say, oh, okay, this is gonna map to a register. And, and as you do calculations, you can start to imagine what the bytecode is gonna look like underneath. Oh, this is gonna be loaded into the accumulator. Then it's gonna pull this value, it's gonna add that in. So it, it starts to make the JavaScript code underneath become a little bit more real as well. Now, just to finish on the subject of registers, declared variables are not the only things that we could put into those registers, right? There is also such a concept as temporaries. What do I mean by that? So hopefully that's been useful and you've got a deep understanding of how mathematical operations work at a bytecode level for the JavaScript code that you write. So in the next video, we're gonna do even more complicated operations. And to do that, we need to understand how temporary registers work so that we can then build up the calculations that we're making. So I'll catch you in the next video.